I'm thankful this morning. I'm, I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful for a I'm thankful for the screen we have. I'm thankful for the lights and the staff. I'm thankful for the fake smoke that we have. I'm thankful for the sound and the media. We take it all away. And Jesus is still enough. And he'll always be enough. And before we end this service this morning, I want to give everyone an opportunity to know Jesus as your Savior. But you see, so many times we keep our eyes on the things we don't have. We look at what our neighbor has or what this one has or a relative has. We think, we don't have this, so we're not there. We haven't made it yet. Stop looking at what you don't have. And if you've got Jesus, you've got everything you need. And I'm not telling you that because I'm a preacher. I'm telling you that because I know it to be the truth. I've experienced a lot and almost nothing. And in each instance, I had Jesus and I didn't have Jesus. And the times with Jesus were a whole lot better than the times without Jesus. He's my provider. He's my healer. He's my best friend. He's my savior, my deliverer. He's my strong tower. He's my hiding place. How many of us just ever had a day where you didn't know if you could take any more or not? But Jesus is there. That you can go and talk to him and know that the world may hate you, but Jesus loves you. So this morning, I'm not going to ask anyone to bow their head. If I felt led to do it, I'd do it that way. But if there's anyone here this morning, that wants to accept Jesus as their Savior. I'm just going to ask you to slip up your hand right where you are. If everyone would please stand, if you just stand for a moment. If you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, you want to rededicate your life to Him, just slip up your hand right where you are. No one will make fun of you. I see that hand. Is there another? Nothing to be ashamed of. I see those hands. It isn't the game. It's real. If you want to accept Christ as your Savior, you want to rededicate your life to Him. The Word of God says that if you're ashamed of me before men, He said, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. I see those hands. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. I see that hand. Anyone else? He'll save you right where you are. He'll give you a brand new life right where you're at. All of you, I want everyone in this room to pray and, and watching by internet. I want you to pray this prayer with me. And if you received, if you raised your hand, I want you to repeat this prayer. And once you repeat this prayer, before you leave this place today, I want you to tell somebody about the decision that you made to receive Christ as your Savior. Because it's one thing to do it when no one knows, but it's something different when, when you tell somebody about what you've done. It makes us accountable. So right now, everybody just pray with me. Jesus, I come to you this morning, a sinner. But today, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I receive your blood that washes me and makes me pure. And right now, today, Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. Come into my heart. Make it your home. Abide in me, Jesus, and help me to live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you put your hands together and thank the Lord for all of those who accepted the Lord this morning. And, and if you have, if, if, if you raise your hand, I'm going to ask you to stop, just stop by our our welcome center out here. We just have some material we just want to give you to help you get started in your walk with the Lord. And this morning, I, I just, I don't know, I'm going to open the altar up. If you have a need in your life, something you just need to, it's just something about being in God's house on Easter. 
There's an anticipation. There's an excitement. It's different on this day than most days. And the thing about it is, he doesn't hear any better today than he does any other day. But he just wants to touch your heart this morning. If you have a need in your life, I want you to know this altar is open. You come, express that. If you did raise your hand and you want to come to an altar, you be, just feel free to do that. If you just need help, you've been battling depression, anxiety, panic attack, just come. If you need healed physically in your body, just come. Or if you held out not accepting him as your savior, I know the game. I know the drill. I've played it myself many times. Feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit weighing down on me. So God, if you just let me out of love it this time, I'll do it the next time I'm in church. There may not be a next time. I played that game before, and the next thing I know, I was down, staring down the barrel of a gun. I'm not playing games. I'm serious with you. And I knew that at that moment, that if that person pulled the trigger and I died, I'd go to hell. Don't leave here today not knowing that you're right with the Lord. You come as the worship team sings this morning. Oh. This, this is Kelly Rukert. Uh, this is my uh, secretary, my personal assistant, whatever. She runs the ministry. <laughs> but don't tell her that. She'll ask for a raise. Um, but um, she, is, um, she is a very dear friend to my wife and I. We lean on her greatly. And Kelly's usually very quiet, usually. Um, but this morning she come up and she said, she said, Pastor, I believe I'm supposed to share something. And um, when she speaks, and she says she's supposed to share something, I believe that's God dealing with her heart because she never does that unless it's the Holy Spirit. So I want you to give your undivided attention to Kelly for a moment, if you would. Go ahead, Kel. I just feel like I'm supposed to share with you all mine and my husband's um, Easter story. We were living in Newport News, Virginia. Um, 1996, I went and took the kids to service on Easter Sunday morning and they did one scene, just one uh, scene from the Easter story and it was the crucifixion and I was sitting in the back and my husband was at work and some man from the congregation was playing Jesus and the soldiers and they opened the back doors and he came in and they were yelling at him, and they were beating him, and he dropped the cross, and he got back up, and it was right at the row where we were sitting, and right there, I gave my heart to the Lord. And one year later, our family all was here, and they were going to church in um, Huntington at New Life Church, and just about everybody in my family was in that production, and we came home to spend the week. Uh, the kids were on spring break, and we went that Saturday night to see the drama, Got up the next morning and went to church. We were going to visit other family while the rest of mine was doing the production. And in my mother's house, in the bedroom that we were staying in, my husband, he wasn't feeling well, and he went to lay down, and I was trying to get the kids settled in the living room, and he called me in, and he said, Kelly, last night at the drama, I knew I was supposed to go forward, but I didn't want to embarrass everybody. But I know... I know that I'm supposed to give my heart to the Lord. And in that bedroom in 1997, one year after I had given my heart to the Lord, I got to lead my husband in the sinner's prayer. And it changed our life. And it changed our generations. I see my daughter and my son-in-law up here helping in worship. And my son and his wife who are, are quiet and they don't say anything. But I know that the Lord speaks to them from the things that he shares with me. And now I see our grandchildren and, and what they're walking in. And I just want to tell you that if you're here this morning. And if you weren't one of the 10 or 12 people that came forward. It's never too late. It doesn't matter if it's in this building, if it's at this altar, if it's in your pew. It doesn't matter if it's tomorrow at home, in your car, with a co-worker, with your spouse or your child. It's never too late. He is always waiting. His arms are always open. He's saying, son and daughter, come home. I'm waiting for you. You're the one that I'm waiting for. So never think that it's too late. He can change your generations. Let this Easter of 2021 be a moment that you can look back on, that one day you can come up here and you can say, he changed our whole life. He's so good every day, all day long, even in the bad times that you feel like are bad, he's always there. He never leaves you. 
He never leaves you, so give your heart to him. Call him Father. He's waiting for you. This, this is Timmy, her husband. I call him Mr. GQ. I've got to finish this story. Go ahead, Timmy. What happened in that bedroom that night? I never shared this with anybody. But that night, as I was laying there, I heard the Lord say, Are you ready? And he had approached me many, many times before, and I've always said no. But this was that night that he wasn't taking no for an answer. Go ahead. And I kept on saying, Lord, I'm going to fail you. I'm going to fail you. I promise you I'm going to fail you. And he kept on saying, I know you are. I know you're going to fail me. Don't worry about it. I said, but Lord, but Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to fail you. He said, my grace and mercy is never ending. Uh, and, it, and there was like a pause at that time. And I just wanted to say, are you still there, Lord? Are you still there, Lord? And then he said, these, these words right here. He said, would you do it for me? And that just broke me right there. That I, my Savior, would ask me to do something for him after he had given his life on the cross for my sins. And I just couldn't say no, no more. I just said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Go ahead, Timmy. Oh. And, and the blessings that have fallen from that day is unbelievable. It's something I never regret. It's the greatest moment in my life. Go ahead, Timmy. Oh, yeah. it is just amazing what he'll do for you. And no matter what direction you go this day, if you say yes or no, he'll be there when you're ready for him to say yes. Yes, he will be there. He never leaves you. No matter what road you follow, he'll be with you. And he will follow you. When you're ready, he'll be there to say, come on home, son. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's just good stuff right there. Just take him at his word. I think that so many times we spend more time trying to question and discount or discredit the word of God than we do just believe it and walk in it. When I made that decision in 1991... I made a decision. I won't question your word. You said it in your word, I believe it. If you tell me Jesus fasted 40 days, I believe he fasted 40 days. If you told me that how you created man and breathed the breath of life into him, I believe it. I guess what I'm saying to you is that when you accept him, accept him. And walk it out. There's great miracles awaiting to take place because of your obedience. You saw them today. Souls have been saved, and then Kelly and Timmy get up here, and and and, and I know in my spirit, I know someone during that testimony accepted Jesus as their Savior because they thought they had to go through some kind of, of program to get saved. And you don't. All you have to do is say, Jesus, save me. And the Word of God says, whoever confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart, you confess Jesus as Savior and, and, and you believe in your heart that Christ raised him from the dead, you're saved. You don't have to go through a program. So today, ponder what's been said, what you've seen, what you've heard. And I'll leave you with these words. Are you ready to meet Jesus? And if not, get ready. I pray that you all have a great and happy Easter. I want to pray, and then we'll just... Anybody enjoy the, the one scene that we had from Exodus? It was wonderful. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come today. We thank you for this time. Father, we thank you for when things don't turn out the way we thought they'd turn out. 
But Lord, in the midst of it, you're still God, you're still faithful, and you're still in control. So Father, I pray that you would touch hearts right now. Hearts in the sanctuary, hearts on the internet. Father, I pray that you would move in unprecedented fashions. And Father, I pray that souls, you just continue to tap on the heart of those souls that need to accept you as Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray that you would heal physically. I pray you would heal emotionally. I pray that you would heal spiritually. And Father, I pray that you would just move. I pray that you would do a work that no human hand can do. And Father, I thank you for this group of people known as Maranatha Fellowship. I thank you for my wife who had a vision. For this one scene this year. And I thank you because of that, that there was a group, there was a team of people rallied behind that vision and watched it come to pass. I thank you for our media department. I thank you for our, uh, our sound department. I thank you for our kids department, our youth department, God, and all that makes up the ministry of Maranatha. I thank you for every volunteer, God. I thank you for every person that calls this home. I thank you for every individual that has come out this morning looking for something, for someone. It was Easter. You thought you had to be in church. God said, no, I just wanted you near me. And he wants you to know that he is there for you if you just cry out to him. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. And Father, I pray you bless these people as they go home today. I pray you bless their family time. Lord, I pray you would mend fences. I pray that you would heal wounds in families today. And Father, I pray the peace of God would rest upon each heart under the sound of my voice. I thank you for it. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Can you just give God a great big hand clap of praise and a great big shout one more time? By God's grace, you are dismissed. Thank you for being here this morning. Happy Easter, everybody.